Hi everyone, this is Fran from the 5-Minute Modeler. And uh, for those of you that have been following my channel, you know that I model the uh, Grand Rapids and Indiana line from Grand Rapids, Michigan to Petoskey, Michigan. And I've created my own history in which the Grand Trunk Western actually purchased the line from the Penn Central in the early 70s and improved operations and added passenger operations to that as well. Um, while my, my line ends in Petoskey, the actual line for the Grand Rapids in Indiana ended in Mackinac City, which is at the tip of the hand, if you think about the mitt uh, of Michigan. And once the trains arrived in Mackinac City, they were shuttled to a small yard and ultimately onto a ferry called the Chief Wawatam, uh, which would then move the cars from Mackinac City across to uh, a town called St. Ignace, and that was located in the Upper Peninsula. And this was started back in 1911, before the Mackinac Bridge was actually ever built. And uh, it ran, the ferry ran until 1984, when it was uh, put out of commission. Uh, the bridge actually was built in uh, the late 50s, and once that happened, a lot of shipping was able to tr be transported across the bridge. But again, in my world, uh, we're still running this in the 70s. The interesting thing about the, the ship as well is that it also served as an icebreaker when the ice would freeze over uh, through the Straits of Mackinac. Anyways, I was really fascinated with this operation and I thought it would be neat to add it into uh, my layout. Operationally, it provides an additional point of interest as well as some challenges in moving the cars onto the ferry. Um, while I don't have a lot of room in my layout room at this point uh, to add this, I do have a couple of ideas of where I might place this uh, in a temporary position while, while we're operating. However, this isn't stopping me from building it uh, the ship or the loading dock area. And I've got a, a plan for that. Uh, so to do this, I scoured the internet, like always, for photos, maps, videos, and anything else uh, I could find about it. And uh, I did find a lot of photographs, some videos, some very good videos. And I also uh, found some photos of the blueprints for the side and the tops of the ship. I don't think these were the builder blueprints, but they were nice drawings that gave me some sense of scale and some sense of uh, the, the various pieces. Using PowerPoint, I scaled down the drawings and used selective compression to narrow the ship from three tracks to two tracks. One reason I did this is because while the prototype used the three-way switch to uh, align the cars, I already had a Y switch and two tracks would provide plenty of uh, rail car movement. So at this point, I still have a lot to do, but I thought I'd show you the various subsections of what I've built so far. The first section is the base or the hull, and I used black foam core, uh, stacked three high, I think it was quarter inch, and uh, and banded it with uh, just some cardboard and painted it black. On top of this, I laid out the track and cut into the foam core and inserted the track uh, into, into that. The next section is the portion that covers the rail cars. It follows the contours of the ship for the most part. And uh, once I added that, I added the roof onto that as well. Again, this was built with styrene, so uh, pretty easy to glue. After that, I uh, built out the cabins, cabin space for both the passengers and the crew. I added the roof to that, and uh, what you'll see here is the pilot house in cardboard, but I'll be building that in styrene shortly. I also need to build out the loading dock wharf area and, and the additional trackage to allow the switchers to move cars. Uh, one of the neat things in the operations is that 
like in the prototype, we'll need to use idler cars. Usually those are flat cars or gondolas uh, to move cars as the engines cannot go onto the ship. So while this is not going to be a rivet counter replica, after all, I am a model railroader, not a model shipbuilder, but it should provide the look and feel to be quote unquote good enough for my operation. I'll be sharing more of these, the progress on this in future episodes. So if you want to keep up with it, make sure you subscribe. Uh, and thanks again for watching another episode of the 5-Minute Modeler.